Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. I took like a week's break, but I am back with an incredible guest. I have Natasia Dreams. She is an adult performer, a mainstream fashion model, and an activist. Natasia, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Um, so I remember actually the first time we met, I don't know if you remember this, but I was hosting the red carpet. Um, I was doing like interviews for many vids at the TA awards and you were actually hosting the red carpet for TA for the TA awards. And I remember being like pretty intimidating because you're like this tall statuesque, like gorgeous woman you had like your style is so amazing. It, it's obvious that you have a fashion background. Um, you were just wearing like this incredible dress and like you knew everybody that you were talking to because, you know, obviously like you're a really well-known trans performer and this was your community. And I felt like very much out of my depth because, you know, I didn't know too many people in the trans community. I've been in the adult industry for a long time, but I'm sure as you know, up until really recently, there was a big kind of separation between like mainstream porn, trans porn, gay porn. It was all very like separate and nobody really intermingled or performed together for sure. And so, um, you know, I was very honored that many vids had asked me to, to do the red carpet, but I also felt like, wow, I don't know like any of these people. And I'm, I'm so ignorant in this, in this like niche of porn. Um, and I just remember meeting you and feeling like, like she's so in her element. She looks amazing. I feel really element out of my element. I feel like kind of like just out of my element, but you were so nice to me. And, um, yeah, and that was definitely like my first impression of you. So I was very impressed. <laughs> oh, so sweet. No, I was like so honored that I was sharing the red carpet with you because first I was, they thought I was doing it by myself and it was my first time. So I was like super nervous. And like you, I'm like, I don't know a lot of people there. Like some, a lot of times they had to tell me when they were coming on the, red carpet like hey this is so and so and i'm like hey so hi <laughs> and i had to like literally make the best out of it because i was super nervous i could tell everybody else was nervous too i could felt some like intimidation as well but you know i'm just like a normal person and like a clown so i was trying to like make everybody feel comfortable and i remember just like watching you down there killing it too i'm like yes like i need to be like her she has like all the exterior she's like so calm in her element and i'm like here like super nervous trying to like run out and get a cocktail it was crazy <laughs> isn't that so funny about how you know we see other people and how they actually feel because i felt literally the same as you about you and of course i was trying to keep my calm but yeah like i didn't really know anyone and it's funny because when i watched the edited video back later i like asked the same questions over and over again and i was just like oh this is so bad i just this is so boring i was a terrible interviewer and then they asked me back like two more years the last one of course got canceled because of the pandemic but that like surprised me because i thought i did such a bad job but you know, we always, we're our own oh, worst critic, so right? <laughs> yeah, we're, you're, we're our own worst critic and you were so good. I'm like, I was learning from you. I'm like, let me see what she's doing <laughs> out there. <laughs> wow, that is, that is funny. So, um, so you are a very well-respected performer. You've been in the adult industry for a long time, but I know that you started off um, in fashion. So can you tell us a little bit about how you got into the industry and how you transitioned from the fashion world to adults? So I came to New York and like I transitioned and I was very tall and very skinny. And so like everybody in growing up in high school and stuff were like, you should be a model. Like you should be a model. You should be a model. And I, I never thought that was a reality. And like I idolized models, et cetera. But it wasn't until I moved to New York and I transitioned and like, you know, fresh into my transition, um, I got approached to do a fashion show. And I'm like, you know, I'm here, I'm young. I just moved to New York and, you know, I'm living in like the month, not monthly, like weekly hotels and stuff. So I'm just like, okay, if you're going to be in your fashion show, 
I'm okay with that, but like, are you paying me? Because like, you know, I'm hungry. <laughs> so I didn't even think of it as like a career or whatever. I thought it was like, okay, I'm going to make some money from doing this show. I'll be able to eat for this week. Meanwhile, I had like a waitressing job and I was like transitioning and everything to become a woman. And um, so then they're like, oh, well, you know, there's one condition, you know, the, 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 the photo shoot, I mean, the fashion show, it's going to be on ice. And I'm like, oh, shit, like that changes small, the game. You know what I mean? Small detail. But, <laughs> right. But luckily for them, and this is like a secret that a lot of people don't know about me. Like I was um, almost like in competitive figure skating when I was a child. Wow. Like I almost got, I was at competitive level and they wanted me to start competing. But then the neighbor that I was um, going with, the family was like, upset that I was succeeding their child. So they switched us to another sport. But a lot of people don't know that. So I'm like, oh, okay. I'm like, so then, you know, I've always like skateboards. I, I always like was very active growing up. I ran track, I skateboard, I um, rollerblade all the time. So I'm like, surf. So I'm like, okay, I got this. And they're like, you sure? I'm like, yeah. And they're like, okay, it's on Rockefeller Center. Like I did that show. They sent me out after that. I got scouted and like, I became, I worked as a model. But my thing was, I felt like I was lacking femininity at the time. I was, I was lacking like, you know, breasts and like body. And like, to me, that was a sign of femininity. I was young and naive and I didn't know what what was femininity then so i went to like do like really big and breast implants and it was like you know in the playboy era so i was like my, i was like you know the tracy bingham then like carmen electra and like all that vibe so I, that was my aspiration so i went and i got my first breast at like after two years of modeling i worked and then i got my first breast implant at like 20 20 20 years old and they were like huge and so here I was this really 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 skinny young girl and just huge breasts and so the modeling world was like uh you know they weren't really ready for that at that point mm -hmm. you know it was it was you know the late 90s early 2000s so it was still the supermodel era with like tall skinny long legs you know they weren't trying to have any voluptuousness at all mm -hmm. so my career just started to like fail and like i started to not work so much and i started to get like put in like those situations you know the compromising situations you know because i was exuding sex so i'm like okay, this is not really what I wanted, you know? And I'm like, let me try something else. So I ended up starting, like, went to the strip club. And I ended up going to the strip club. And I worked in the strip club for, like, almost six months to, so, like, almost a year. And I was like, okay, this is okay. But then, like, my, my secret got out at the strip club and everything. And so then I was like, okay, well, you know, the next step from that, you know, is escorting. And then escorting, you know, which was okay, because, you know, it was back a long time ago, and it was, trans was so taboo, so we made, like, a lot of money. And then I'm like, you know, then they contacted me to do adult movies, and my thing was, like, I was always, I grew up in the era of, like, HIV and AIDS and stuff, so I was always paranoid, and my mother put, like, this paranoia in me as a child of HIV, so I, my mind automatically was like, okay, so now I can work in a sex environment, but it's controlled. And I don't have to worry about every person I'm with catching HIV. So it gave me a peace of mind. Because everyone's getting tested. Because yeah. everybody's tested. Yeah. And, right. you know, you have your results and you share it with everybody and mm -hmm. you get to choose your partner. Exact, exactly. With escorting, you know, you don't know what you're going to get. So that was my trajectory from fashion into porn. Mm. So tell us about um, your first scene. So my first scene, I was in Miami and I had moved from New York and I was ha had a boyfriend at the time. We were dating and we had like little issues, you know, he was unfaithful to me maybe like a, a, a couple times. So I decided like, okay, let's move out of New York because it's too much like distraction. Let's move to New from New York into Miami. And we'll start over and, you know, try to make our love last or whatever. 
So we get there and like, you know, we're staying in like the guest homes, like, you know, you pay for the week or whatever, like hotels to pay for the week again. And I'm just escorting, I'm escorting and then these people contacting me and they're like, hey, do you want to do this movie? I'm like, what's who with? And they're like, well, do you have anybody in mind? And I'm like, I look at my boyfriend, I'm like, well, I guess we're doing a movie. (laughs) And he's like, yeah, okay, let's do it. Like, it's money involved. I'm like, yeah. And then with that money, we'll get in the we'll get into an apart a deposit for this apartment that were like down the block. So I remember like talking with the guy and like you're like, yeah, we're gonna give you this money and then we'll pay him this money. And I, I just saw the money and I'm like, I didn't even know like what it entailed or whatever. So they did the little pickup and we were at like I was getting ice cream and he's like walking down the street picking me up. And it was like so corny to me because I'm like, this is like my boyfriend. Like, you know, and we're like acting like we don't know each other. And it's my first yeah. movie, you know, I'm, I'm not used to this. And I'm like, wow, this is like so weird. And then we go back to our place and we like do the movie. And it's like, I was just like so in shock because I've never had like a camera so close to my genitals. And I, it made me feel very uncomfortable. I was like, I don't, I, I don't even know how, it, only reason probably why I went through it with it because it was my boyfriend at the time and we had, we were having sex like three, four times a day. So it was natural. But if not, I don't think I would have been able to do it, to be honest. Because <laughs> yeah. it was a lot, very challenging. I'm, I was very shy. I still am very shy, but I was very shy at that time and I was not comfortable with my body. So it was very hard for me to do. So, um, how did, like, how did you feel afterwards? So when you were done, did you feel like, okay, like I got through that, this is something that I would consider doing more of, or were you like, okay, that was enough. I don't really ever want to do this again. Yeah. I was like, that's good. Like I tried that. Uh, It was fun. I got the money. I got to my apartment. I started doing, you know, then I had a name for myself then. So then I was doing webcam and I was totally okay with that. Mm. I was not looking forward. I was not trying to continue this um, occupation until we broke up. And it was like a horrible breakup. And I did the whole, like, you know, wanting to kill myself thing and drugs and fucked up. And then one of my girlfriends came and she was like, hey, so, you know, I'm your friend. I'm not going to let you be like this. I have some scenes, like solos and stuff booked in LA and you're coming with me. And I'm like, no, I don't want to go. She's like, no, I'm not asking you. Like, you're coming with me. So then I went and I'm going to be 100% honest. I I probably haven't said this a lot. I went to do this movie with this girl and this girl at the time was HIV positive. Mm. So I'm like, wait, did you know that going into the scene? I knew it. Yeah. Okay. So I was like, how is this going to work? Like, you know what I mean? And I'm like, well, I'm not going to work with her, but like she's working in the industry. And I'm like, you know, and I saw her do the scene with the guy and everything. And I'm like, wow, like this is before it was really, 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 really regulated. Like, you know, and I was just like, wow. Like I kind of, I was kind of like traumatized actually by that. I was like, you know, they didn't ask her for anything. You know, I know her because I know her personally. And I was like, you know, this is kind of scary because now who knows if she transmitted it to this guy and maybe this guy's going to come back around to work with me, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh my God, you know, I did a solo at that time. And then I was like, okay, then, then I was really like, "Mm, you know, I don't know about this industry. Like, uh I'm really like, I was really turned off by it and I was like scared. And I was like, okay, now I really don't want to do this industry because they're not even regulating as much as I thought they were. Right. And then I went back to New York and then I was doing like the party scenes and appearances. And it wasn't until I met a performer and he was like, he, he, I was really attracted to him at the time. I was young and I was really attracted to him at the time. And he was really attracted to me. And we had like a, you know, we kissed and made out and stuff. And he ended up setting up my next like big production dvd he did everything he contacted the company he booked everything and just contacted me and was like hey i have this scene for us to do and i'm like okay like and i really wanted to have sex with him he really wanted to have sex with me so i'm like this is perfect first time we're having sex well it's on camera i was still really nervous 
and I will be 100% honest as well, I was under the influence of drugs mm-hmm. on, my, on that movie too, because I, you know, I just came from the scene with my boyfriend that I was super nervous. Then I was, the next time I was in porn world, I was with my girlfriend who was HIV positive and I saw her like come in the guy's mouth that she was working with. And I'm just like, whoa. So my brain is like, okay, I don't know how I'm going to do this. Like, I really don't know how I'm going to do this. The money's good. I flew all the way from New York. I'm here. Like, I got to do this. But, like, how? So, like, I did, you know, some drugs. Calmed my... I was with my best friend, and he, like, did my makeup. And I did some drugs. And I went and did that first DVD. And people talk about that DVD to this day. It's their favorite scene. And, like, and that was my first, like, big production dvd they put me on the cover and then the rest was history can you say um what the dvd was i don't want to say the name of it now because it's very derogatory you know and i don't want to promote that you know names now but yeah yeah gotcha no totally understand so actually that kind of brings me to my next question you know, you've been in the adult industry for a long time and I have too. And there's been like huge changes in the way that, you know, the mainstream quote unquote, which is generally like the straight side of porn that like kind of most people know about has been trying to embrace diversity. And there's been a lot more like trans, um, scenes coming out, performers working with trans people, so how have you seen the adult industry change in the time that you've been in and and how are trans performers treated now? Is it better? Is it um, kind of the same but different? Like, how do you see the changes that have happened? So I see I see a lot of changes happening. You know, I'm, I'm really happy that performers now are having the freedom to sleep with who they sleep with behind closed doors on camera now. I'm happy to see that people are taking that, you know, and and not having shame to perform with trans performers. Like I'm here for that. At the same time as well, it's very performative at the same time. You know what I mean? I know people like that work with trans, but then at the same time, they don't never associate or hang out with the trans person or, check for their well-being or something like that it's like it's it's they they think of it as only work and you know us as trans people we are people outside of work you know what mm-hmm. i mean we don't want to be taken advantage of just for you to get the clout that you're working with a trans person when you really don't mm-hmm. even like trans people and that's what a lot i'm seeing and it's very frustrating to me i don't want to say any names but there's a female performer out there and she played this thing that she's an ally and she's like gonna she was play the knight in shining armor but at the end of the day she was a traitor like she ended up going back and saying everything that we say we were talking about incompetence to the people and and then i see her doing trans scenes as well like and i'm just like it's so performative at the same time like and I don't know what's worse, to be honest. I don't know if it's if it's worse being ostracized and, and having people sleep with you behind closed doors or having people sleep with you for their own advantage, which is, I mean, you, I guess you take the lesser of the two evils. So, so like, I mean, I'm... Kind of like for clout, you know, because, you right. know, now we're, we're seeing this, you know, like performers doing their firsts, right? So it's like mm-hmm. first boy, girl, first anal scene. It was like first IR. And then it's like first mm-hmm. trans scene. Trans. Like you guys are yeah. some kind of like hurdle to overcome or some next step in like their, you know, ladder to success or something like that. And a lot of it is what also has to do with the whole HIV thing. Like there's mm-hmm. a stigma on trans performers that, you know, we have HIV and we spread HIV and and we get tested just as much as the cisgender performers. So like, it's funny because people will put people on a no list for working with us, which I don't understand the meaning behind it. Like, you know, I have a test that's, 
24 hours. You have a test that's 24 hours. You have a test that's 24 hours. Yeah. Like, there's no difference at all. And the, that's what also we have a lot in our industry. Like, you see the opening, but there's also that. Like, people put people on a known list because they work with trans performers. And, like, a lot of trans performers that I, I mean, a lot of guys and people that I've worked with now, but it's been their first time. They've gotten a lot of shit for it. And like, oh, you know, you're working with those trans now. Like, you know, and, and I really admire them for taking that step because it's those people that lead an example mm-hmm. and not do it just because, you know, they want to be on the website, on the splash page with the with the press release that they did work with trans, you know. Right. You were in uh, Jessica Drake's Wicked movie, right? Yeah. And what was the name of that movie? It's escaping me now. Carnal. Carnal, right. And I remember reading an article, um, and, you know, from what, from my understanding, Jessica has always been like an ally of the LGBT community. And when somebody asked her, you know, why she had um, a trans scene in there, because, you know, Wicked is considered this kind of like couples friendly, very mainstream company, like they're not edgy in any way. Um, and so I think it was a surprise to a lot of people that like wicked was putting out a scene. And, and I remember reading, Jessica said, you know, like I I put a scene in there because I really wanted to, um, kind of introduce, you know, working with a trans performer as something that was, you know, still normal and sexy and beautiful. And it didn't need to be its own like trans DVD, like its own, like trans, like, you know, it didn't need to be this niche. And, and a lot of people wouldn't necessarily watch a trans scene if that meant they had to seek it out. But because it was in this showcase with the other like regular scenes, then they kind of had this opportunity to be introduced and then like, maybe they like it and they would have never discovered it otherwise, which I thought was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. And I, I love that. I'm here for that. I was, I love the, the inclusivity that way is amazing. Like, yeah, you don't, I don't think, you know, you need to announce it as anything different. Just treat it like trans women are women. Mm-hmm. That's it. Trans men are men. Treat them as you would treat a normal uh, cisgender man and treat trans women just as you would treat a cisgender woman. It's so easy. <laughs> there was also like some pretty big news when Daisy Taylor did a scene with Xander Corvus for Brazzers. And Brazzers is again like another big mainstream site, and I and I shoot for them, so I went on and I looked at the scene, and I was reading the comments, and of course there was like you know some people who were like oh, I didn't know that this was a trans scene. I came here for straight porn, but there was a lot, a lot of people more so than the negative comments were positive comments saying like this is super hot. Thank you for including this scene. I'm into seeing this. Like thank you, yeah. Brazzers. Like so you know, like the feedback was really positive and it made me, you know, realize I think a lot of men are ashamed to admit that they have an attraction to trans performers because, you know, like there's that whole like, you know, masculinity and I have to like be a man and I can't possibly like anything else, but just like cisgender women. But when you kind of introduce that option on a website that's catered towards straight men, um, and they don't have to like go and like seek it out, you know, um, which I think some people are scared to do because whatever that means about their sexuality, I think it's a really wonderful way to open up people's horizons and allow them to like, you know, consider the fact that they might like other kinds of porn and that's totally fine. I love it. I recently shot with them as well with Xander and that was an amazing experience to be honest. Like, you know, he, He's a pioneer and my hat goes off to him. Like he's doing the work as it should be done, not because of the money, because he wants to, and he wants to set an example. And that's why I appreciate him. And I have high regards for him. Yeah. Cause Xander's a contract star. Yeah. I wish a lot of performers would take his lead because he is, that is a man. You know, that is, he's secure in his sexuality. He says trans women are women. I can work with them. I can be friends with them. And I still 
have sex with all the million other cisgender women and, you know, and have mm-hmm. his normal life. And I, that's the example that we need. He's the perfect example, like knight in shining armor, Xander. <laughs> yeah, no, he's great. We, we love Xander. We've had him on this show and he's, he's amazing. And I, I definitely applaud him for that. So has that scene come out yet? No, it hasn't. I, I shot it. Um, I shot it in February, so I should be coming out soon. I don't know yeah. what they're waiting for. It's going to be so good. It's going to be so good. Like, I'm so excited for it to come out. I'm so excited. It yeah, was a long amazing. day of shooting. Yeah, it was like nine hour day. But I know the finished result is going to be so good. Oh, my God. I'm excited. I'm excited to see it. Me too. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and then we'll be right back. So hang tight. Holly Randall Unfiltered is brought to you by Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve is like the biggest online sex toy retail store. And in fact, they don't just offer sex toys. They also have movies. They have lingerie. They basically have anything sexy that you could be looking for. Now they have an incredible offer. Get 50% off of any one item when you go to adamandeve.com. But that's not where it ends. So not only will you get 50% off any one item, they will also load up 10 free gifts for you on top of that. You will get six free movies, a free mystery pack that includes an item for him and a special toy for her and something we know you'll both enjoy, plus free shipping. Now that's a lot of free stuff. But you can only get this offer if you go to adamandeve.com and use my code HOLLY. That's adameve.com. Use code HOLLY for 50% off of any one item plus 10 free gifts. All right, so we're back. So, Natasha, I just want to talk a little bit about um, your transition and your, like, coming to, like, growing up and then realizing you were trans because, you know, this is something that's in the news a lot. And, um, I think, you know, myself, I'm always like trying to educate myself on, you know, other people and gender identities and sexual identities. So I just want to talk about your experience. Like, when did you realize that you were born the wrong gender and like, how did you manage that growing up and what made you finally decide to transition? So I think that it was like known from day one, even my mother, she told me like when I was born, she could tell I was different and she treated me as such. Like, you know, I remember my youngest memories of her is like, you know, like doing my hair and like these elaborate styles that you wouldn't normally do on a baby boy, you would do on a girl. And I was like, you know, like, I'm just like, yes, like I love this. Like, you know, I felt very comfortable. So then, like, growing up, like, when I was, like, five years old, you know, you start to, like, play outside and, you know, you play house and, you know, those little stuff with when you're kids. And I was always wanting to be, like, the mother of the house. And, like, I wanted to do all the domestic stuff and I wanted to have the husband coming home. And I'm like, wow, that's when I started to realize, like, well, I feel this way, but I know I don't look this way, but I, I know I act this way, but, like, not everybody's taking it the way that I feel about it. So it was very difficult to me because, you know, I grew up in like low income housing and, you know, and then I was going to really nice schools, like gifted and talented educational schools, which that helped me in the beginning because, you know, it was like intelligent kids and it wasn't the kids of my neighborhood because the kids in my neighborhood, they didn't understand what was, what, who I was and what was going on with me. And I didn't really either. I, I went through a lot of changes and I tried to like, I tried to like force these feelings that I had about these feminine feelings about being a woman and being in the wrong body. I tried to like suppress them in my high school because the bullying and everything was just gotten so bad. And I tried, but it just, I couldn't, like it just, I couldn't, it ate me up inside. And so I never knew how it would be possible to transition to complete my dreams, but I just always dreamed of it. And I always had it in the back of my mind, like, Hey, like, like, you know, my, I'm not in the right body. And as soon as I find a way, like, that's what I want to do. Like when I turn 21, like I want to be a woman, like, I don't care about drinking. I don't care about partying. Like, I just want to be a 
woman complete. Like, and that's what's my goal growing up. And so when I would, um, in high school and stuff, I, I was always hanging out with girls. I guess I was taking notes of like how to be as a woman. And then like, I've always felt more comfortable around women and they never felt threatened, you know, sexually around me. I've always had like that advantage. And like, you know, the kids in high school would always like tease me because like, you know, my girlfriends will get naked in front of me and, you know, they wouldn't care. And it was really, 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 really hard times. Like nobody really wanted me to let me be who I wanted to be. So I had to like lie and fake. And then finally I just like gave up and I'm just like, Hey, this is too, I met like another feminine gay guy in my high school. And he was so like unapologetically him. And that gave me an example that, hey, like, you know, he's living his life the way he wants to. I'm going to live the way I want to. I'm going to dress how I want to. I'm going to act how I want to. And then, and then a little by little, I started gaining my confidence. And then it wasn't until like, you know, and then I started dressing up and, you know, I did it. And I was like, you know, just playing around with my femininity and I was, and I was testing it and seeing like the attraction and like all the guys that I would get, like when I would, you know, dress up in like my, my drag clothes and like, I would get like really attractive guys that I would normally be attracted to. And I'm like, wow. So, you know, this is probably who I really am and this works for me. And then I, it wasn't until I moved to New York and I'm working at a drag queen restaurant that I have to do drag probably like four or five nights a week for a living. And then, you know, the first night I walked in the restaurant and I saw a first trans woman and I saw her breasts and I saw her like, you know, her little waist and she had like nice hips and ass and like her body was amazing. But then she had like, you know, like was really bad stubble on her face. And I was like, like, what is that? Like, how did you do that? Like she had like a huge, maybe like a B cup breast, like, you know, with her little bra. And I'm like, how, did you do that? And she's like, hormones, honey. Like, and I'm like, where did you get that from? Like, that's what I want. That's who I am. And then I literally sought it out. I sought it out so quickly that I found the girl who got it. And she gave me like my first shot. And honestly, and my roommate, my old roommate and I, we talk about it. The joy that I felt when I took my first hormone shot was like, I finally found what I was missing. Like, I literally danced around the house for, like, six hours. Like, the j- amount of joy. Like, I guess the, the whole, the juice of the hormones running through my body gave me so much pleasure. And I felt so complete. And then, you know, 24 years later, here I am. 25 years later, here I am. Oh, my God. That, I love that, you know. Sorry. Seeing my eye. Um, <laughs> you know, I feel just like everybody's, you know, our, our quest in life is always trying to like figure out who we are and like and being true to ourselves and 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 our identity. But you know, you faced that hurdle in a way that so many of us don't understand. And so, you know, that moment where you feel like you finally like found who you are, I, I can only imagine what an incredible moment that was for you and that's like so so touching um I really just thank you so much I love that how did your uh how'd your mom feel about it It sounded like she was very much like on your side through all of this which is great because you know so many people don't have their parents support no matter what what their journey is so it was it was mixed so like what my me and my mother we have a really crazy relationship so it was mixed. So in the beginning, like when I was like 13 years old, 13, maybe, yeah, 13, 14. And I was not sexually active at all. And my mom is really bad at communicating, you know? So I guess this was her way of telling me she knew. So my mom made me a doctor's appointment when I'm like 13 years old, 14. And, um, and she goes to the doctor and we make appointment and she's like, yeah. And the doctor's like, yeah, you know, how can I help you? And she's like, well, I need to have, I need my son to have an HIV test because my son is gay and I want to make, I want to make sure he doesn't have HIV. And I was like, so in shock. I was like, 
Like, you know, she could have told me that before and I would have told her like, mom, oh, yeah, I'm gay or I'm trans or whatever, but I'm not even sleeping around. But like the trauma of that, I was just like so in shock. So then we had like a rough relationship after that. It was really bad. I ended up running away from home. And then when I moved to New York, you know, then we, we reconciled and then I moved to New York. And when I moved to New York, like, you know, every year, before I moved to New York, I was in Seattle and she would send me like Christmas presents, like, you know, t-shirts and stuff when before. So the year that I transitioned, um, I told her, I mean, cause you know, we have a really good relationship. I, I'm very honest with her. So I told her, I'm like, Hey mom, you know, I'm taking hormones. Like I'm living my life as a woman. I'm like really happy. Like I, this is who I am. I finally found my place on this earth. And she's like, well, you know, you're not my son anymore. And I'm like, well, no, I'm your daughter. You know, you have a son, which is my brother. And now you have a daughter. Like, you know, welcome. This is your daughter. And she's like, <laughs> she's like, mm. like, she was really wary about it. And I was like, well, you know, I mean, thank God I was like all the way across the country and living on mm-hmm. my own. Like, I, she, I, I didn't really care her opinion. I wanted to share it with her. And it was so sweet. It, it, it touched my heart because this was like I moved to New York in September, October. By November, I was on hormones, and Christmas comes along. So she's like, you know, ask me for my address for the care package that she always sends me, and I'll never forget. She sent me bra and panties oh for my Christmas. God. Yeah, oh. and I was just like, yeah, just I, 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 I get emotional even just thinking about it. And I was like, oh my God, like, and so then. So then we have this other roller coaster. So then she accepts me and she's like, yes, you know, I have a daughter. She's amazing. I have my beautiful daughter. I have a beautiful son. I'm complete. And I'm like, okay, mom, I want to have surgery. And she's like, surgery. Oh my God. But see, then if you have surgery, you're not, she comes back with, you're not my son anymore. And I'm like, well, mom, I don't think I've ever been your son. You yeah, know, I'm talking about your this. daughter. <laughs> yeah. I'm your daughter. In you got over this. Body. Like, yeah. Like, well, so, but now she's super supportive and like, you know, my best friend and she knows everything and I go visit her and we hang out a lot and text all the time. Like she's my best friend. Very supportive. Yeah. It just, it just sounds like, it sounds like she loves you, but she had a really hard time accepting all of these different stages that, that you went through. And it sounds like everything, all these little like gestures that she made starting with like the taking you to the doctor because you might have AIDS, which is so traumatizing because I'm assuming that's before you ever had that discussion with her about you like yes you know, not being straight. Um no but I mean it's I wasn't yeah. Yeah. I mean it's a terrible way to go about it. But I, I I would imagine that probably in her mind she was like, this is me trying to make sure like you're safe, but going about it like the completely wrong way, which parents are really good at doing. <laughs> Yeah. But I'm glad that you guys have reconciled and you have a good relationship now because I know that that's a struggle for a lot of people. So, you know, I, hopefully if anyone who's listening to this is, you know, thinking about transitioning or is struggling with their gender identity can have some hope that even though there might be a rocky road in the end, you know, their parents can accept them for who they are because I know that that's, that's a real struggle for so many people. Yeah. Um. I want to talk a little bit about your, your fashion work versus your adult work. So, um, I, I know that when you were doing fa- in the, in the earlier days when you were doing fashion and then like doing porn kind of at the same time in porn, obviously you were out as being trans because, you know, obviously, um, but then in fashion, you were still trying to hide and like be a woman and like the, the, you know, struggling with those two different roles. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, that is, it was a really difficult time because, you know, back then being trans wasn't very popular. It wasn't respected at all. It wasn't in everybody's living room as it is now. So it was very looked down upon, especially in fashion. Like if you were maybe like a part of the crew, okay. But as a model, like there was unheard of. So It was really difficult because, you know, it's a sex kind of driven industry as well. Like, you know, the the, the casting directors want to sleep with the models and the other models want to sleep with the other models. And it's just like a big sex scene as well. So it was really difficult navigating through that 
without being able to be fully comfortable in my skin. And it wasn't until like actually porn that actually helped me become comfortable and be like, okay, I would, I would think to my head, like, okay, I'm so celebrated here in porn and like everybody loves me. And like, you know, people are giving me free stuff and, and upgrades to suites. If I, if they know that I do porn and I'm trans. Why don't they do this when I'm a model as trans? Like, I think I should get the same. And it, it, it worried me constantly, like, you know, and then I would have to keep the secret of like, you know, and I, I also would have the the modeling as the moonlighting because I didn't really, like, it, I would have to gauge of who I met and who I would tell what I did, you know? So, mm -hmm. like, you know, if I met a guy, for example, and I was going to date him and I don't, he was kind of, like, conservative, I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm a model. And he was like, oh, yeah, let me see your stuff. And I'm like, oh, yeah, here, do, 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 do. But then if it's, like, a cool guy from, like, California, I'm like, yeah, I'm a award-winning porn star. And they're like, yeah, oh, my God, that's, of everything <laughs> so it was like a lot of gauging and like feeling people out at the in the beginning like are you going to be cool with this and until then when it got like I got super big in porn I'm like okay well then I never thought like when I was going to modeling that I would be successful because I always thought like you know my porn will come up every time I'm like I'm gonna do this job and like because it happened to the girls in the past they got nice big jobs and then somebody came out and exposed them. And I was just like, you know, waiting for the day. Like, honestly, like waiting with such anxiety, like looking over my shoulder every day for the time that someone's going to come and be like, oh, you want this girl and you're putting her on your, well, look it. Do, 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 do. And I'm yeah. like, and then I, 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 it just weighed on me so much that I, then I'm just like, there's really nothing that I can do. And my thing was, like, if modeling wasn't getting me jobs and keeping me successful and to establish to not do porn, then you know what I mean? Like, they have no say in what I'm doing with my body at the end of the day because yeah. I need to put or keep a roof over my head and I need to put food in my, in my mouth. So... That's the thing. That's the thing that I went about, and I was always transparent. In the in the beginning, I wasn't, of course. In the beginning, I wasn't, and then my celebrity blew up, and I'm like, okay, I have to be transparent with anybody that I'm working with now. Like my agents, my modeling agents, they all know that I do porn. They know who I am. They know the severity of my career, and they're just like, well, if the clients don't search, if the clients don't do their research, that's on them. Right. And I'm like, oh, I love you guys. <laughs> so you're still modeling. You're still doing fashion modeling, right? I'm actually killing it more than ever. I just did like this help couture show that like changed history. And I've been working with like these really big photographers doing really big jobs that like signing NDAs. Like I can't even talk about it. Big job. Wow. Like I'm so in shock, like the way that my career just like, it's crazy because it, they're both of my careers now are like snowballing so much. And I'm, it's a little bit overwhelming. I'm not going to lie. Cause I'm feeling like I'm getting pulled in like both ways. Like, Oh my God, like I gotta be the Tasia that I gotta be my model that I gotta, you know, it's some days I'm like, Oh my God, wait, who am I today? So eventually I'm, I have this project coming out where I just, divulge everything and I just accept everything. So I'm just preparing myself for that. Do you have a preference over working in fashion or in porn or is there like good things about one and like bad? Yeah, you know? like I love, I love fashion, the perks that you get, like as being a model and like the free stuff you get, like, you know, like entry to here and food and events and this. And I also like, I mean, I love porn too because I love sex and I love like, you know, hooking up with hot people and I like having orgasms, you know, and I like traveling and the freedom, you know, and I like the whole glamour of it all. So for me, they both go hand in hand. Like porn helped me be very comfortable in front of the camera with, with, with and without clothes. Yeah. It really helped me because I was really shy and really insecure before. Yeah. yeah. 
I mean, it's definitely you at your most vulnerable. So if you can feel comfortable being naked and, you know, showing all your orifices to the world, then yeah, I guess everything else is kind of a cakewalk, right? Yeah. Yeah. Everything else is like, whatever. Like. <laughs> <laughs> So now that you're a successful performer and, you know, award winning, um, do you find it difficult to date? Are you dating? Are you oh single? My God. It's so difficult. It's so difficult. Um, I'm single at the moment. I had a relationship. I think my last relationship was like two years ago. It's really hard. And for me, it's like I have my both careers to juggle and it doesn't really give me a lot of free time. And I'm also jaded because I worked in sex work so much. So I know like the dark side of dating and relationships and the sneakiness and the, you know, the mischievousness that goes on with relationships. So I'm like really jaded. So mm -hmm. I feel like, I don't know, like I personally, I don't have time right now for a relationship. And I think a lot of people are intimidated me and me because of my position that I am in my careers, both of them, which is you, you would think it would be celebrated, but it's the opposite. So yeah, dating is really hard. And I feel like the more successful you get, the harder it is. Yeah, I think you definitely tend to weed out certain people, people who can't handle like a woman in a position of power. Um, but you yeah. know, who wants those people anyways? That's what I said. But I mean, it gets lonely because, you know, like I have so many accomplishments and there's nothing I want more to like come home and be like, oh, my God, babe, like I did this. Yeah. I did this. I did this today. Like, oh, my God, I killed this. I got this contract. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, nothing more than I want than to share that. Yeah. So, yeah. But yeah, I mean, as of sense. now, I'm like spoiling myself. I'm taking care of myself. I'm loving myself more than ever, which I haven't done and probably my whole adult life. So I'm on that path right now. Yeah, that's great. So uh, speaking of paths that you're on now, you have a pretty exciting project coming up. I believe you're going to be doing some directing. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, I'm so excited about this. So Aiden um, came up with this website and it's called Pansexual X. And it's about, you know, pansexual people, which comes perfect timing right now because like a lot of people are like you say exploring their gender and discovering who they are and not a lot of, a lot of people want to be putting in the box and forced to do these sexual situations that they're not comfortable with doing with their body so i think it was a perfect opportunity for this project to come out it's called pansexual x you know it's for pansexual people and she asked me to direct on it which I love is because, you know, that came from us doing the panels and speaking about, you know, black lives and putting black people and people in positions of power. And instead of like, you know, putting a black square or hashtag BLM, why don't you hire a black person? Why don't you hire a black trans woman, you know? And Aiden did just that. Like she put her money where her mouth is. And like, I totally respect her and love her to death for that so she gave me this opportunity she's like hey like you know i want you to do this i want you to take control of this she's like i have awards i've been directing for years like this is your time to shine and she's like here's the path here's the reins and let and she let me go and and honestly like this is like the first time in my career 16 years you know that somebody's given me that much control to do what I want and honestly it feels so good and the stuff that we're making is genuine you know it's it's collaborative it's real like you know we're getting performers who really want to have sex with each other and, and play who cares what role they want to play or whatever they want to do like we're trying to evolve the the evolve porn because just like sexuality is evolving porn needs to evolve as well yeah. Have you started actually shooting scenes for it yet? Or are you still yes. in pre-production? I shot, no, I shot, Um, I directed my first scene. It came out on the 28th with um, Jenna Fox. And I signed me a contract for six more scenes for me directing and starring. So I have five more to come. 
So I'm shooting two more in October, which are going to be really good. I ha- already I have the meeting for them after this. And yeah, I'm just really excited because this is like, you know, it, it means a lot to me. It's like my baby, you know, I'm, I'm building it from the ground up with Aiden and we come collaborative efforts and I want, I want something glamorous. I want something sexy. I want us to finally be on the pedestal that we deserve. So I'm so yeah. glad that she gave me the opportunity and it's been really good. I, I, it's, I've, I've, se- I've seen good. Um, commentary and my interviews have been very well because you know a lot of people connect with pansexuality now and Mm -hmm. they don't want to be in this gender confines and binaries so it's perfect Mm -hmm. yeah I see I think I I see like us as people moving towards a more pansexual identity which really just means that you're just attracted to what you're attracted to and it doesn't have to be a boy or a girl or trans or whatever you know what i mean it's just like being attracted to people and to energy which you know ultimately is is really the best thing so yeah this is just a shell and we have our energy inside and people connect on the inside before they even connect on the outside so you shouldn't let what's on the outside stop your connection because that's all that we have in this earth you know we can we can't take these material things with us we can take the connections and the feelings that we felt on this journey that's it yeah yeah no you're right i always try to think of whenever i'm struggling with like you know what matters in life i always try to think of like okay what would i think on my deathbed would i think like wow i wish really wish i'd bought like more louis vuitton bags or do right. I wish that I had like spent more time with the people I loved, made more connections with people, um, you know, made people feel good and loved and showed people how much they loved. Like, you know, I always try to identify in that way. Like, how would I feel about this sitting on my deathbed? And that usually kind of helps me like center, you know, what's important in life. So, and I think connection is definitely one of those things. Yeah. And I like the fact that now we can, we have freedom to, perform how we want to and we're not in these roles these hyper masculine roles that are kind of derogatory for us trans women Mm. you know what i mean not all of us are these hyper sexual like want to penetrate everything that comes around penetrate zilla you know what i mean like we (laughs) have to like (laughs) we have to like break these (laughs) roles I feel like that sometimes. I feel like people want that every time they see me, they think I'm just going to be like, wow, 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 I'm going to penetrate yeah. the heck out of you. Yeah. Yeah. One thing that I have learned, um, you know, interviewing various trans performers is that they tend to be cast in like very stereotypical roles of like wanting to penetrate. Um, but that, you know, some of them don't want to do that. Some of them just want to be penetrated. That is not the role that they prefer, but they're always cast in that role. Cause it's like, oh, well you have a penis then like you should always use it. But, um, not everybody feels that way and that's not necessarily the way that they want to have sex. So, um, you know, I think it's important to listen more to the performers and, and what they prefer and what, you know, they enjoy because ultimately you're going to get a better scene in the long run. If people are doing the things that they love, I think that comes across. That's what we're doing at Pansexual X. Like we have a meeting. We're like, hey, what turns you on? What what do you like? And so, oh, you like this? Okay, well, I like that. Okay. And so then we take all those notes and we go to town. There's no format. There's nothing. It's just the notes and, you know, the chemistry and we just let it flow. Yeah, that's great. I think that's the best way to do it. Well, Natasha, I have one. I'm trying to find it. I'm going to let you go because I know you have meetings, but I also have a question from one of my Patreon members for you. Yeah. And I was trying to pull it up on my computer and it was not working. So let me um, find it. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, this is from Merit. Um, and uh, he says, my question is, how are... Um, Natasha's preferences in her personal life affect the scenes that she selects during her porn career has the wage gap between cis women and trans women narrowed. Yes, it has. Finally, we're, we, we narrowed the gap and in my personal life and my, uh, uh, in my professional life, now it's pretty much the same. Like I choose who I want to work with, what role I want to play I don't compromise myself anymore. So I 
put the rules down of what I want to do. And if they want to work with me, that's the way it has to go. And like a note to all the performers out there, you know, don't sell yourself out. Like if you don't want to do something, don't do it. Stand your ground. Value yourself because you'll regret it in the end. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, the the landscape of adult has changed so much now, you know, with OnlyFans and all these other, and, you know, performers directing now. Um, performers have more control over their careers than they ever did. So I would imagine that when you started, you probably didn't feel like you had that ability to say no to things that you didn't want to do. It was like, do it or you won't get hired or like labeled a diva. But I know that that's not, you know, so much the case anymore, which I think just makes for a positive, more positive community overall. And, and, you know, that's what I want to see. I want to see the adult community as a more like positive and um, connected community where people have a lot more agency and choice over their careers. So Yes, and we lift each other up, not tear each other down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because that's what the rest of the world is doing for us. We don't yes, need to tear already. each other down. We got you got everybody else to, out there to do that for us. All the trolls on Twitter. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, Natasia, thank you again so much for your time. It was such a pleasure getting to know you. Hopefully, I will see you again on the red carpet someday. I know. I want to get shot by you too. Your shoots are amazing. Thank you. I would love that actually. You would be amazing to shoot. Um, there's nothing that I like better than shooting uh, somebody who's got like a professional fashion model background. Cause it's like, I don't have to give you any direction. You know, I just put you in something fabulous and I just press the button and I can like take a nap and everything like, looks amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we should do it. Ooh. Yeah, that would be great. That'd be really fun. Um, can, can you tell everybody where they can find you online, your social media, so all that I, stuff? I'm on, um, Twitter. I mean, Twitter, I'm on Instagram. They're letting me live for now. So it's let Natasha live. This is like my eighth account in like two years. Let Natasha live. Um, I'm on Instagram, I mean, on Twitter, Natasha dreams X. And my only fans is Natasha's dreamland.com. Fantastic. And people can find your directorial debut at pansexualx.com. Is that correct? Pansexualx.com. Yep. The scene is out with Jenna Fox. It came out on the 28th and more to come. Yay. Fantastic. And you guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Holly Randall. And you can, um, of course, watch these interviews on my YouTube channel if you're actually just listening to this on the podcast platforms. Um, it's youtube.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered. If you want to support the show, go to patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered. Thank you so much for joining us, and I will see you next week.